let's pray ask the lord to give you an encounter again this morning and the lord appeared again to Samuel in Shiloh, even by his word. I'd like you to pray. Appear unto me again, O God, even by your word. I am a receiver. My heart is opened. Let this word change my story. Let it turn my life around. Undeniably so. You have called this conference undeniable. Let it be so in my life. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Help us this morning, Father, and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Yesterday, the Lord began to help us explore the dynamics of the supernatural um, to empower us even by his spirit to let our light so shine according to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. And we took our time to explain that it is in every believer's divine destiny to live an uncommon and enviable life, a supernatural life, but that it does not just happen by default. It takes more than intention. And we walked a few steps. Number one, we said the first requirement for an uncommon life is light. Please never forget light. That when your light comes, when God wants to show you mercy, he shortens the distance between you and the light you need. Hallelujah. He says, our eyes shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Light. You must know what the word of God says. This life that we have received is activated through knowledge. Ephesians 4.18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life that is in them through the ignorance of their minds. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we said the second step is not only to know the promises and the principles of the kingdom, but to know the conditions. Please do not forget. I'm doing a recap so that we are able to have a flow this morning. That many believers are aware of what God has said, but they are not aware of the demands. That means what you need to do. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6, the Lord spoke to Moses. And he says, this is what the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. The glory of the Lord intends to appear but it does not appear unless and until you know what to do. So your meditation is not complete just when you know what God has said. You must know what it takes. There are conditions connected to every promise in scripture. Every promise. If you find the promise alone, you've only found one part. You must find what it takes to do or to be done. To activate that promise. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To observe and to do all. Not some. His commandments which I command you this day. He says that the Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you. Condition if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, admonishing Joshua after the death of Moses, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Be consistent, he says, 
that thou mayest observe to do. So the point of meditation is not only to discover what is yours, but to also find out what you should do. Are we together? Thou shalt meditate therein, he says, that thou mayest observe all to do all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and thou shalt have good success. And then number, number three, we said the third step is action of obedience. The action of obedience. That is what we call faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Faith is not believing. Believing is part of the process that leads to faith. You can believe and not have faith. Are we together? Because even the demons believe, yet what they believe does not profit them because it is not mixed with faith. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. Faith is not merely believing. Faith is not merely confessing. There are many believers who believe and yet they are unable to obtain. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hallelujah. We must obtain the grace to walk in keeping, not just to know what he has said that produces an uncommon life, not just to know what it takes, our demand, but we must obtain grace to do it in reality. He says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Hallelujah. Now, you see, faith in itself, please listen carefully. Faith in itself is not what really produces the results. Faith is the connecting point. Faith is what connects the individual or the situation to the power of God. The cable that you have connected to the source is not what brings light. The assignment of the cable is to connect the gadget that needs to come on to the source of power. Is that true? And the cable is so flexible no matter where the source is, it can connect it. So if the, 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 the source of power is outside, once you have a cable long enough, you don't have to move what you are connecting. All you need to do is have a cable long enough to connect to the source. You don't need to carry your house to where the transmission line is. No, it's unnecessary. You can keep it wherever it is. Your assignment is to make sure there is a, an unbending connection but what really powers the gadget is not the wire. Are we together now? That leads me to my teaching this morning. The anointing. For a very long time in the body of Christ, there has been this conflict and this confusion as to which one is really more important. Is it faith or the anointing? There are people who would say, it is only faith, forget about any anointing or power, whatever. And there are those who say, forget about faith. You don't need faith. Once the anointing is there, it will work. The Bible never dichotomizes them. The Bible will isolate them to teach them as far as communicating doctrine is concerned. But when it has to do with performance, that both of them will have to work in synergy. If you understand the dynamics of faith, and you do not know the operation of the anointing, you will still be at a loss. If you understand the operation of the anointing and you do not understand the dynamics of faith, it would be the same thing as having a house or having a, a power source that never goes off and yet your gadget is never on. You will need the power source and the wire that connects it. Both of them working together. So every time your gadget does not come on, the first thing you need to examine is whether the gadget is working, whether it is fine. If there is no problem from the end of the gadget, you begin to trace the wires. And there are times that you may find out that because of wear and tear, something may have happened to the wire. Is that true? Your assignment now is to fix it. 
or to find who can fix it. And then there are times that for some reason, you may find out that the wire is fine, but probably it was not properly connected to the source. For as long as the source is fine, the wire is fine, the gadget is fine, there is no limit to the power and the efficiency that is produced. Please, I want you to pay attention this morning. I have studied the subject of the anointing with, with every sense of humility. I have invested my life studying on the dynamics of the anointing, not just because it is necessary for my call, but because I really believe that there is a lot of confusion that even those who really walk in the anointing have not taken out time to study. They just found it working in their life. And so they just enjoy it with so many gaps in understanding. Hallelujah. So let's discuss the operation of the anointing. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Say with power. Who went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Scripture number 2. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer and friend Who would have thought that a lamb could Rescue the souls of men Oh, you rescue the souls of men Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him, he says who is able 320 now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think but that doing is according to the power that works in us that doing is according to the power not just according to the desire not just according to the word according to the power your healing according to the power your advancement in life according to the power your lifting according to the power the forceful advancement of your destiny according to the power the measure of the power is the measure of the results it is always according to to the power hallelujah i stumbled across a video one day on youtube where i saw these gadgets and they keep putting metals or objects it crushes you know there's this machine that can crush cars can crush anything i think it's something that recycles them and then there was this steel i think a steel ball or something that was put there and the machine could not crush it Anything they dropped, it crushed metals, heavy metals like pieces of papers. And then they dropped it and the machine just, it was vibrating but could not do anything. Because of the strength of that steel. Then they took it to a bigger machine. And my goodness, my God, it crushed it into pieces. I said, this is it. According to the power. Every situation is relative to the power that it is exposed to every situation relative that that video i think it was just 10 or 15 minutes but it taught me a powerful lesson you would drop cars i mean they would cut cars into two or three and just throw them and that machine would crush them like like you are 
you're, you're, you know, you're grinding something. They would pick metals, it will crush it. Pick this, crush it. Wood, it will crush it. But they put a particular kind of metal and the machine stopped. It was shaking but could not crush it. They had to move it to a bigger one and it, it crushed it completely. It became flat according to the power unto him most people just know that he can do exceeding abundantly but they stop there but the bible lets you know there is a condition it says it is according to the power are we blessed what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability don't just write ability it's important to upfront identify the owner and the principal custodian the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel please write it down the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and produce supernatural results the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce supernatural or extraordinary results that means behind every fearful dimension of exploits is God's ability backing that individual God's ability at work in a human vessel, God's ability at work in a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and then to produce extraordinary results. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So every time God sends a man, that's not my teaching tonight, but there are five things that validate the call of any man. When God calls you, to serve whether in ministry or to serve in whatever kingdom assignment among the five things that must come to you is the backing and the empowerment from heaven hallelujah there is always a power component to every call god would never send an individual without empowering you now, there are many people who have understood what God wants them to do. There are many people who, have, who are visionary, but they have not stayed to receive the empowerment it takes to produce God's dimension of results. And so our lives remain natural. Our lives remain extremely common. And nothing about it brings glory to God. It is only marvelous in our sight if it is the Lord's doing. If it is man's doing, it is natural to our sight. But if it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. Is someone learning? So the anointing has to do with God's ability. The anointing is given to man, but it belongs to God. It is exclusively God's ability. Please never forget this. That every time God grants us access to the anointing, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. We are only stewards and not owners. That's why the definition says God's ability. You are at liberty to work and operate with it, but you will give account of how you manage or mismanage that ability. It is God's ability. It is a trust that he gave us. Why do we need the anointing? Two reasons. Why do we need the anointing? My dearly revered mentor of blessed memory, Dr. Miles Monroe, will say, when the purpose of a thing is not known, it says the abuse of it is inevitable. The word abuse comes from two words, abnormal use. Every time purpose does not connect ability, you will use it abnormally. Why do we need the power of God? Why do we need the anointing? Are you ready? Number one. To subdue the forces of darkness, fighting against our destinies and fighting against the purposes of God. Reason number one, 
Why do you need the anointing and why do I need the anointing? To subdue the forces of darkness. Fighting against our destinies and fighting against the purposes of God. To subdue the forces of darkness. Fighting against our destinies and fighting against the purposes of God. Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3. Let's read together. It's projected. Ready? One to read. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit unto thee. It is through the greatness of the power, not the greatness of the begging, not the greatness of discussions, not the greatness of negotiations. The only language the devil understands is power. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you, the day you gave your life to Christ, the members in church who saw you were not the only ones who saw you. The realm of the spirit saw you. The altars that fought everyone who refused them from coming to the cross saw you. And a declaration for Jesus is a declaration of war already. Whether you are prepared or not. Lord Jesus, I hand over my life and my destiny to you. I vow that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the devil says, you've drawn that line. Not even Jesus was spared of that attack from Satan. When Jesus was born, do you know how many children died because he was born? Every time saviors emerge, there is always a contention from the realm of the spirit. Because Moses was born, Satan in pursuit of that deliverer, children were killed and there was cry all over Egypt. When Jesus was born, because Satan was trying to abort the purposes of God. From two years and below, imagine how many innocent women lost their children. Satan is that determined. He can wipe a nation to look for one person. So don't you think when you come to Christ, Satan will spare anything. If you let him, he will destroy your life. If Satan can kill all the children from two years and above in search for one person, you think it's your finance he will not touch? You think it is your health he will not touch? If he can take lives, he will take anything that will lead him to you. When Satan came to Jesus and he could not get Jesus, his disciples became the next point of target. He tried to use the compassion of Peter. It did not work. Finally, he landed on Judas. Unfortunately, Judas gave himself and he lost it. Satan will use anything and everything to fight you and fight the purposes of God. But he says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in your works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Let me prophesy to you that the challenges that have mocked God in your life, by reason of the empowerment you will have in this conference, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will go back and you will subdue them effortlessly. Please sit down. There are many sincere people who keep making bold and arrogant statements. God forbid, Satan cannot touch me. Make sure you have met the burning bush before you stand before Pharaoh. It is a risk to stand before Pharaoh without an encounter with the burning bush. Pharaoh is not a child. Pharaoh is not a playmate. Pharaoh is a wizard. He will kill anything that can be killed. Moses encountered the God of the Bible. And when he met Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. Pharaoh looked at him with shock and wonder. Moses, are you out of your mind? Let me remind you that this is Egypt. If your 40 years in the wilderness have eroded the, the level of expertise of wizardry we have here, let me remind you again, Moses. Pity yourself and go back in peace. 
it was Egypt that protected you when they were killing other people. How dare you think you would just come after 430 years? You think you are the first person who tried to bring the people out? Don't you think the people must have revolted within that 430 years? Moses, go back. How many zealous people have gotten to their homes gone somewhere and said no my father worshiped idols i won't worship idols again and they went to set certain shrines on fire half of them could not walk again by the next day because they made very casual statements without power without understanding in this kingdom we don't make empty boasts before god speaks you will the power to back up what he's saying is always with him before you make blind declarations that will cause casualty, ensure that you have sustained both the understanding and the empowerment. He told them, tarry ye. Don't be in a hurry. I'm the one sending you. I know what you will face. Don't be in a hurry. Your zeal is good. But stay back until you are endued with power. Is someone learning? Apostle, I want to be a businessman with no compromise, a kingdom billionaire blessing the nations. And the devil says, congratulations. I've been sitting on this mountain for a long time. You are welcome. And then you get there and all of a sudden you find out that it takes more than buying and selling to scale in that mountain. Why are other people like selling in business? No matter what they sell, it works. And I'm here struggling. Go and find out what else they did. I can assure you it's more than buying and selling. Satan took Jesus up a mountain and showed him the glories of all the world in a moment of time. And says all this has been given to me. Bow down and I will give you. Why do we need the anointing? To subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the purposes of God. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. 2, 7. 27. And it shall come to pass in that day, may today be that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder. Say amen. amen. And his yoke from off your neck. Now hold on. Before we get to the anointing part. Please use your imagination and imagine how this human being will look. With a burden on his shoulder. A yoke on his neck. Can you ever stand straight? Can you ever stand tall? Look at the description of such a man. The Bible says this man had a burden on his shoulder and a yoke from his neck. And that's how he was supposed to move. How do you excel in destiny in that kind of state? It says, but the burden shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed. Not because the person is tired. Not because he's getting older. Not because he went to school. Not even because he has become a Christian. It says, because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. So if anybody asks you what suddenly happened and what suddenly changed in your life, you can tell them because of the anointing. I know you as a June. I, I know that you were in a rented apartment. This is August and you are in your own house. What happened? Because of the anointing. I know that nobody in your house has risen beyond a certain place. I hear that they've given you a national honor somewhere. How did that happen? And you tell him a yoke and a burden that has been placed over people. An embargo, a line that has been drawn by witchcraft. Thus far have you gone that no further shall you go. The anointing will come and smash everything to pieces. There are doors you should not open. You should break so that those after you can pass. If you open it and you pass, it can close again. He has broken the gates of brass, not opened it, and cut the bands of iron in sunder.
There are forces. Let me tell you the truth. I don't mean to scare you. And I've read my Bible. Most people do not know how determined Satan is to see to it that your destiny is wasted. To have a picture of how determined Satan can be, I repeat, find out how many children died because he was looking for one person. Satan will waste anything to find you. Are we together? Anything. Number two, why do we need the anointing? To fulfill our God-given assignments and advance the purposes of God. To fulfill our God-given assignments and advance the purposes of God. Hmm. To fulfill our God-given assignments and advance the purposes of God. Luke 24 and verse 49. Why do we need the anointing? Behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you. Jesus is speaking to them now. In preparation for your assignment, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Do you know what that means? I am a God of speed, but it's a risk to run without empowerment. So tarry. Tarry. Your trigger that you can now begin to go is the arrival of power until it has come. You are not at a loss when you stay. Listen very carefully. There are many people who hurry themselves into tragedy because they think their desires are enough. I'm sincere. I'm well-meaning. But they have not received the power. For 30 years, Jesus was training and waiting for the arrival of that power. If I were Jesus and I know that I have 33 years, I would start my work early. As at 30 years, for a 33-year lifespan, that's too late. But Jesus said, not, not when power is there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If you are given 33 years to live, I will start my assignment from age 2. But many will start from age 2 and waste their time until power comes. And if it does not come, you may start at age 2 and never finish. Jesus was showing us something very, 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 very instructive. How does a man have 33 years on earth Ladies and gentlemen, and until age 30 before he starts. The same way someone will say you have been in Abuja for 20 years. Don't worry. By the time that power comes, one year with power will be a barakatoskiata. Could this be a prophetic word for someone that one year? one year with the divine empowerment of the spirit it will turn your life god will take 20 years results and put it in one year shout amen shout amen again please sit down i believe in the power of god oh listen to me before you begin to run find out whether the power for the assignment has come why would jesus be speaking to a people and say tarry you use the word tarry for an assignment that comes with urgency tarry ye until you be endued with power your assignment will need it your efficiency will need it you will need it as your evidence tarry ye i like moses moses cried and said god we want to get out of these wicked people, but we are not in such a hurry if you will not go with us. We know the consequences of taking a journey without your backing. So verify, are you going with us? When he met Gideon, Gideon said, ah, don't put me in trouble. You have to verify. I, all the signs you must give me to convince me that your backing is with me. I must receive it, otherwise I am not going. When he met Mary in Luke chapter 1, 
from verse 34 and then 45 he met mary the angel now comes to mary and mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man what is all this one you want to cause trouble for me and he says the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you how shall it be that by july i'm here with no job and by december i'm dedicating an estate the power of the highest don't don't settle for an excessively natural life you must expect the supernatural factor in your life these things don't endorse laziness it is for you to believe that there is a system of advantage built into the life of the believer is someone hearing in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let's read together it's projected acts 4 33 ready one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness stop stop did he say with great oratory did he say with great discussions did he say with great argument they gave the witness of the resurrection with great power it says and great grace was upon how many that means everybody can carry it great grace can be upon everyone a man of god a businessman great grace can be upon a father a mother the children great grace was upon them all it will take great power to give witness of the resurrection in your life that means to validate that it is true jesus is alive in your life for with great power gave witness of the resurrection everybody say i need the anointing oh say it say it say it i need the anointing it takes the anointing to produce god's dimension of results the anointing is not for preachers no the anointing is not for those in ministry no the anointing is for everyone who desires to manifest that godlike dimension of spiritual possibilities the anointing is the principal sponsor of supernatural living any other agency cannot pay for such an expensive dimension of living only the anointing can sponsor that realm of possibilities are we together two basic reasons why we need the anointing to ward off the forces of darkness that fight our destinies and contend with the purposes of God and then the grace to be able to fulfill our assignments the empowerment Jesus waited for 30 years and after he was baptized in Jordan by John the Baptist the Bible says the heavens were opened and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 it says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place verse 2 it says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting verse 3 says and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it sat upon each one of them and they were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance that was the beginning of the supernatural church in one encounter 3000 people came to Jesus Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them and the people with one accord the Bible records gave heed to those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies 
that were lame were healed. As a result, there was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray one prayer? Please lay your hand again on your head and say, Father, fresh power for the journey ahead. Someone pray. Someone pray. Fresh power for the journey ahead. Lord, I thank you for all that you have done in my life, but I realize the limitation that the absence of your power have been pegged at a level. Someone pray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're a man of God here, let me show you a scripture. Romans, I believe, Romans 15, 7, 19. Romans 15, 19. Please give it to us. I'd like us to read together. I found this scripture and it blessed me. And I said, that it will, I will never, never, never bring reproach to the gospel by not trusting God for the grace to back the things I say with the power that produces results in the lives of the people. It says, through mighty signs and wonders and by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That means if the power component is not captured, you did not fully preach. From this place to that place, with signs and wonders from one region to the other, it says because the message and the power were both released, I have fully preached. If it is only the message that is released and the power is not released, you did not fully preach. If it is only the power that is released and the message is not released, you did not fully preach. The message and the power that backs it. I have fully preached the gospel. How to receive the anointing? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is where I want you to pay attention, please. Acts chapter 1 from verse 8. I'd like us to read the first five words you can see projected. First five words. Ready? One to read. But ye shall receive power. One more time. But ye shall. Please help me chorus the fourth and the fifth word. Ready? Receive. Power. One more time. Receive power. One more time. Receive power. So power is received. Are we together now? Power is received. If you ever find a man who has genuine spiritual power, it is because he has mastered the art of receiving it. The Bible says, if you ever desire power, you shall receive power. Anything given to you to receive can be rejected. If it is true that you shall receive power, it is also true that you can reject power. And there are many who have rejected power. You shall receive power. So don't ask, where is it coming from? How come this man is so powerful? You shall receive power. Hallelujah. There are two principal platforms for receiving the anointing as revealed from scripture. Two principal platforms. Never forget, you may want to write it down, that genuine spiritual power is received. According to Acts 1 verse 8. Genuine spiritual power is received. How to receive power? How to receive the anointing? Number one, directly from God through an encounter. The first platform available for the believer 
to receive power is directly from God through an encounter. Directly from God through an encounter. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. The first platform for receiving genuine spiritual power. Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience walking with me. You would notice that sometimes I like to help people to get the stresses in scripture. Again, we are going to read the first four words. First four words. Are you ready? One to read. How God anointed Jesus. One more time. One more time. The last time now. Who anointed Jesus? Who anointed Jesus? So it is possible to have an encounter directly. How God anointed Jesus. It's not just that he was anointed. How God anointed Jesus. With the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God. The same God who anointed him was with him. Hallelujah. Directly from God through an encounter. It is possible that a man can have an encounter. A, a solid, genuine, Bible-based encounter with God. And with it would come supernatural empowerment. Many of you have heard of my experiences. I've shared some of them. You probably have listened to them. And one of my encounters with Jesus, I know what it means to have an encounter with God and the riches of divine power that flows from that encounter. Solomon had an encounter with God and the Lord asked him, what should I give you? And he cried for an understanding heart and he says, I have given you this. And I've also given you what you did not ask for. Riches, wealth, and honor such as no man has had and would ever have. And he woke up in the morning. If you were Solomon's roommate, you would think you just slept two of you and woke up in the morning. Not knowing that something had happened to one person. Hallelujah. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, he stretched forth his right hand. And such surge of light and power entered into my being. You would hear me say it and I never get tired of saying it. When I speak these things, I relieve it again. It never grows old. How I did not die is a miracle. Imagine carrying something like an ant and putting it, connecting it to a high tension cable. How in the world do you survive that kind of thing? But this is a miracle of the mercy and the grace of God. Hallelujah. I have not only met him, I have received from him. It is true. Directly from God through an encounter. Number two. The second platform for receiving the anointing is by impartation from genuine carriers of the anointing. Ah, now you pay attention. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. As I just said this, I just sensed a strong, it was like a wind of power just blew in this place. By impartation from genuine carriers of the anointing. Sadly and unfortunately, when it has to do with the anointing, um, the body of Christ has suffered its shares of all kinds of things, you know, so many things, and we know that God is helping us in the name of Jesus. And there are people out of fear of not being corrupted and contaminated with error or anything demonic or witchcraft, antichrist, have thrown the baby and the bad water and get afraid of any extraordinary manifestation of the power of God. Mm -mm. Everything fake is there simply because there is something real. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Satan depends on the authenticity of the ministry of Jesus to thrive himself. With passion in your heart and with scripture-based direction, you can encounter impartation from genuine careers of the anointing. Genuine careers of the anointing. Matthew 25 from verse 8 and 9. Matthew 25. And the foolish said unto the wise, the parable of the ten virgins, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy. There are them that sell. There are them that sell. The word sell does not mean trade it for money. There are them that sell. Every company has major authorized distribution channels. Is that true? Samsung has its office in Europe, in America, in Africa. There is always the headquarters, but there are authorized distribution channels. You see people rejoice because they have been made the African representative of a particular company. So if you are tired of fake products, one of the ways to authenticate it is to look right from the headquarters. They can direct you. There are usually numbers on their site that tell you if you are in Africa and the environment, this is the authorized place. When you step in there, you can smell there is the seal of authenticity all over that place. You know that this is an authorized distributor. And they'll say, you are welcome, please sit. We are giving you this with a warranty. Go to them that sell and buy. He never said go to them that sell and take. You don't take the anointing. You buy. But you do not buy it with money. You buy it with humility. You buy it with meekness. These are the currencies that you use to purchase the anointing. You buy it with hunger. You buy it with discernment. Go to them that sell and buy. You may be bankrupt of a particular dimension of grace. But believe me, across the body of Christ, there are them that sell. I have met very powerful and very anointed people and I've had the honor of having them pray for me and you will be amazed. I remember one of my encounters with God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. The Lord granted me the privilege to go and an instruction to go and sow a seed many years ago. And that morning, the Lord told me, this is the day. Be on your way. And I remember I went, carried my seed, you know, went and did whatever I had to do. And when I was done, in fact, I didn't even get to see him at that time. I just dropped the seed with honor and said, no problem. Another time, God will grant grace. And as soon as I came out, I was going to enter the car. I remember clearly, the Holy Spirit told me to come out of that car. And he said, place your hand on the ground. Canaan land ground on the floor. I placed my hand and he said, from this day, you step into the overflow anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Believe me when I tell you there are them that sell. There are them that sell. The challenge is some of, it's not all of them that are popular. It's not all of them that are great. But there are them that sell. For some of you, many of your loved ones who are close to you are part of them that sell. It's only that they are too common for you to see how uncommon they are. So you can lose out of what they carry. A woman who did not go to school and raised 11 children without begging. You think that is hard work? No, there is a grace hiding there. If you can discern, you can go to them that sell and buy. It will never tire me to tell of some of these my stories. Years ago in Joss that I met two women. I went to buy sugar cane, pastor. 
and I met these elderly women and they were about to pay trying to remove you know they used to put money and wrap it and tie the thing so that you can't there's no way you can steal it now we use pockets someone can even remove you don't know but those people would tie it to ensure you can't be losing the wrapper and they will not know and I said please 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 I pleaded with them I said you are my mothers please give me an honor to pay for you was not more than 100 naira they insisted and I said please please let me do this and when I did that, they were blessing me, blessing me, blessing me. And for some reason, I didn't pay attention to what they were saying. But one of the women looked at me and said, My son, forever walk upon gold. Go to them that sell and buy. Go to them that sell and buy. We were returning from Ekiti State years ago. I went to preach in Afe Babalola University that year and while we were returning between Ekiti State and Ilorin where we would take the flights to come back we passed a very strange village where people live mysteriously long and I remember when I was I was seeing the obituaries then I saw one 136 he had just died I said what is this and abroad they say 114 is the oldest man they should come and see mantles that are resting on people so after the whole thing, when the vehicle was going, I told them, stop in that community. I said, no, they have to pray for us. And we didn't find anybody who was really speaking English there. We said, please, who is the oldest man here? We just want to honor him with a seed and have him speak over our lives. Because if you know what God has called you to do, you know the kind of graces you need. Are we together? Finally, we got someone who could speak limited English and... He led us. He said, okay, there's an old man somewhere. And we went and saw the man and we greeted him. We said, we're men of God. We're just passing and we wanted to honor him with a seed and have him pray for us because we discern there's long life. And he laughed. He said, kneel down. Those who have this thing, ba, they know they have it. Believe me when I tell you. If you are in doubt whether you have it, you are not the one. Those who sell, it's like somebody who owns, who is an authorized distributor for a company and they're saying they are not sure. No, such as I have, give I. Such as I have. For someone after today, with all humility, you can tell someone such as I have. They say, with this grace for favor, can I have it? You wouldn't say, oh, humility. Uh, no, I don't know. I'm not even sure. I, the thing is just working. You can know such as I have. Isaac knew he was carrying something. He said, make me venison. I want to release something on you. I remember the man said kneel down and he was praying in Yoruba I honestly didn't care what he was saying my own is my spirit was opened father whatever agreement you had with this territory that has made you to bless them like this living as if Satan does not exist I receive it when I was done sold into his life and honored him when I was going to enter the car I remember to quickly thank some women we had seen standing. And so when I got there, they now told me one of the women standing was the wife of the man, 136, who just died. Standing, not with a stick. I said, let's go back. I went and stood there. I said, please, this is my man interpreting. I said, you should help me tell her that although the man has gone, two have become one. So he's still alive in her. Can she pray the prayer you would have prayed for me? And then when he told her, the woman laughed. She tapped me. She said, come. I didn't care where I was going home. I just went. Then we entered a room. And she started showing me photos of when they were young. That was the wife of his youth. You know those days they married sometimes as teenagers. The wife of his youth, sir. She was showing me the photos happily. And then I now pleaded, I said, please, they should tell her they've prayed for me. It's not that I have some unbelief, but you, they, there's nothing wrong in adding. The apostles received the Holy Ghost in Acts 2. Acts 4, they cried again and it still came. For everyone that seeketh, find it. Do you know when I asked that woman to pray for me, she smiled. And I knelt down, she took up both of her shoes. And on bare foot on the ground. This woman began to pray and prophesy and release that grace. 
when I came from that encounter, I ran back to Zaria then. I said, my people stand up. You don't know what I have come with for you. <laughs> ah, go to them that sell and buy. You can be struggling financially. You have done well in terms of productivity. You are not lazy. You have products and services. But your gift must be anointed. Just because you have a gift does not mean it to work. There are those that sell. Please don't forget this message. Go to them that sell and buy. Man of God, go to them that sell and buy. There are fake products in the market and yet there are houses when you go to you will not find one fake product because there is still a way of discerning correctness. Is that true? There's fake fan, there's real fan, there's fake speaker, there's real speaker, there's fake watch, there's real watch. There are, there are striking differences. But if at all you want to have, please give us that scripture again. Matthew 25. The wise answered, let's do 8 and 9 again so that you will see it. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil. Why? Our lambs. We have lambs. The lamb there stands for the word. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So I have the word. God has spoken. I have the word. But the oil to power it is gone. Please help me with your own. And he says, mm -mm. hear what the wise said. The Bible did not call them the foolish. The foolish were those who did not pay attention to more oil. You need both oil and lamb. Are we together? And because the lamp does not increase or decrease, it is the oil that needs to be added. The lamp remains consistent. Please back to that scripture. Verse 9 now, 25, 9, Matthew. But the wise answered, saying, not so. That means this is not how it is done. Do you know what that means? You don't receive from colleagues. He's saying we are all the same. What made us wise and foolish is just that we discern. So you are saying we should help you. Even though I have the oil, I can't give you. That's not how it works. You have to go to those that sell. There must be that spiritual potential difference. For as long as we are contemporaries and colleagues, there will not be a flow. Go to them that sell and buy. I can give you. I can't sell to you. But go to them that sell and buy. I had the honor of lying down quietly, and I say this with every sense of reverence and humility, lying down to pray in the prayer room of our Father in the Lord, Baba Deboe. And when I lay down there, I was not asking God, give me things. That would be a stupid prayer. Things? You don't need to be born again to have things. You just need to be wise and diligent. There are things you receive that money cannot buy. And I lay down and said, oh God, if there is one thing I'm asking, it's the covenant of answered prayer that you have had with this man. Can that grace rest upon me? See, behind every glory there is a story. Oh. Believe me when I tell you there is a story. When your man of God comes here and starts telling you the story of his spiritual sojourn, mantles, graces that were drawn through honor, meeting them that sell to buy. Most believers are too proud to be imparted. Most believers are too arrogant Unfortunately, in this our world where you can see glaring absence of results and yet people still carry this colleague mentality. Anybody who is truly called of God and given the privilege of the anointing and really understands how God blessed him will never be arrogant towards it. Because when you know how God helped you and that he showed you mercy, 
Even if you have to release, it is with humility of heart, acknowledging the privilege to be considered to be a steward. Everybody say impartation. Mm. Philippians 1 verse 7. Please take it higher for me. Ah, His grace is resting here now. Philippians 1. Even as it is meet for me to think of this of you, because I have you in my heart, in so much as in my bonds, and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, it says, ye all are partakers. Partakers. You know what it means to be partakers? You are beneficiaries. Please help two people now. I just saw like dew. Just coming, even while they are seated. Just that anointing. And for one, God is saying that he's answering your prayer. That you have been praying this. Not, not for, we'll do a general prayer. But this is for a particular person. I just saw like dew. Just resting on someone. You see, let me tell you the truth. When it has to do with the power of God. God responds to hunger. We may be in church like this. But there are people who just came to hear and see but there are those who came with hunger two people just saw that anointing please when that comes upon them just help them and hold them but for those people god is activating something from within your spirit man is is a dimension of grace you will begin to function in in fact for one of you you have even seen it in a dream you have seen these things happen repeatedly but when that grace and that mantle comes, this is why we come to church, so that we can receive something that is of substance. So please pay attention. I only declare as I see from the realm of the spirit that that grace, two people, when that happens, just help them and hold them. We'll do the general prayer and then God is going to grant that grace so that your life becomes an expression of the grace and the glory of God. That you find out that your life just helped this woman, please. Romans 1 and verse 11. Romans 1 verse 11. For I long to see you. I, I long to see you. Please help the person who starts running out now so he does not enjoy himself, he or she. Just help them. The power of God is coming on one person, like literally to run out. Just help them. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come the moon. This is a moon. We need a moon. Romans 1 11. For I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. I long to see you. I have desired to see you so that I may impart, not just to speak to you, to impart upon you some spiritual gift. Numbers chapter 27, please, from verse 18 and 20. This is Moses and Joshua. Numbers 27. And the Lord said unto Moses, pay attention to this scripture, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom the Spirit of God is already upon, and lay thy hands, 18, please keep 18, lay your hands upon him, verse 19, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. Oh, I love verse 20. And thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him. 
you see that you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is a mantle it is transferable why did he put the honor on him that all the congregation of israel may be obedient it takes more than shouting it takes more than sincerity when the mantle of honor is not upon you a generation will not listen to you no matter how sincere you are You should thank your pastor for the desire to see you rise. You see, this is how you know a great shepherd. By his heart to see that every grace needed for your rising is made available for you. Are we together? Take some of your honor and give to him. Because he's now in a position where people need to hear him. It takes more than saying the truth to be heard. Take some of your honor. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Let's see what came upon Joshua. 34, 9, Deuteronomy. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him as did the, as the, as, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 2, it's a long reading, but we may just cut from verse 12. The full text is from verse 1 to 15. But let's cut to verse 12. Elisha began to pursue Elijah with determination to receive something. I hope you know that Elisha was not supposed to be the next prophet. The next prophet should come from the band of prophets. But their arrogance, they were familiar. This one is just a teacher. And there was one who it was not in his prophetic destiny. No. Just because you are around the anointing does not mean you can carry no wonder respectfully speaking i will tell you many people within certain churches and christian circles never really receive the mantle upon their father a stranger will come with hunger and know that this is not just a pastor help them please whereas there can be people seated there oh this is we eat together we pray together i even clean your shoe Oh, you will never be the Please sit down. We're about to pray. Please keep that scripture for me. Second Kings. The Bible says Elisha saw it. Remember he told him. He said if you can please go up to verse 11. I want to show you a principle and then we'll pray. 11. We're reading to 15. Please watch carefully. And it came to pass. As they still went on and talked. That behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire is that a normal human being is that how people leave the earth it is appointed unto man to die once and now a chariot of fire is coming to come and pick a man and parted them both asunder and elijah went up by the whirlwind to heaven verse 12 and Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took off his clothes and rent them in two pieces. Verse 13. He took also the mantle of Elijah. You see, he took clothes, but he also took mantle. You can take clothes and not take mantle. Are we together? The man who is anointed can give you his car as a gift. But that is not the mantle. He can give you something. There are people who are around the anointed. But they are looking for clothes. Not the mantle. 
when you see the blessing of Abraham, when Abraham was blessing all the sons he had with Keturah, the Bible says he gave them gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him everything he had. So what is the everything and what is the gift? Don't worry, you don't have to bring everyone under the anointing out until I ask you so that it doesn't distract the service. Thank you. Hallelujah. Once you just manage them wherever they are, when it's time to bring them out, we can let them know. Is someone getting blessed? Let's finish up the scripture. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan 14 and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters that means the water did not part for Elijah it parted for anybody carrying that mantle Hi, please understand what I'm teaching you in the name of Jesus Christ where is the Lord God of Elijah he said and when he had smitten the waters they parted hither and thither you can reproduce any result if you have the honor to receive the mantle. 15. See what happened. And when the sons of the prophet, what a title, and it stopped there. You can be a son of the prophet and yet not be a carrier of the mantle of the prophet. They were sons of the prophet, but there was no evidence that they had carried anything from the prophet but one who was never called the son of the prophet was the one who ended up carrying that mantle 15 and when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him they said the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha and they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him Everyone who has mocked you and said it's not for people like you. Anyone who has said you know it, based on the normal sequence of things, it should not be your family with this level of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the God who helps men, may something come upon your life this morning that will change the narrative of your destiny, of your family, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, in the name of Jesus oh god let power from heaven come upon my life please pray in one minute power from heaven power from heaven upon my destiny upon my destiny let power come upon my destiny In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please write this down quickly. Just help those under the anointing. Please. Two keys. Please sit down. Two keys that will be required to receive from the careers of the anointing. For some of you, the Lord brought me this morning to teach you how to receive the mantle that is upon this great servant of God. For some of you, you love him. You have seen what God is doing in his life. And you are saying, Lord, how do I receive? Here is the answer. There are two biblical keys to receive from the anointed. Number one, honor. Number two, service. Number one, honor. Number two, service. Honor is a mysterious spiritual magnet that can draw to you that grace from a genuinely anointed servant of God into your destiny. There are people who have never physically met certain people but have drawn the grace. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 3 and verse 9 to 11. 2 Kings chapter 3. Watch this now. The king of Israel and the king of Judah and the king of Edom. The Bible says they fetched a compass of seven days journey. 
and there was no water they wanted to fight and the cattle that followed them they were dying of thirst verse 10 and the king of israel said alas that the lord had called these three kings together to deliver them unto the king of moab they were discouraged now watch what happened and jehoshaphat said is there not here a prophet of the lord that we may inquire of the lord by him and one of the king of israel's servant answered and said here is elisha the son of shaphat which poured water on the hands of elijah what was his credential for receiving service he was never called the son of the prophet he was called by his biological father's name however he poured water on the hands of the prophet not knowing that the hand he was honoring and serving was the hand that will release that grace upon his life finally he poured water on the hands of elijah let me give you a very honest counsel dishonoring discrediting and fighting your prophet will destroy you there are rules in the realm of the spirit and i pray that god will show mercy to this our Afghan generation and help us to really understand the mistakes that we are making let me tell you how it is in the realm of the spirit when a father fights his son you lose your honor when a son fights his father you lose your life there are allocations to the consequences that follow to lose your life there does not just mean you stop living physically the bible says he that dishonored his father that his candle will be taken away from him and he'll be he'll be he'll be exposed to obscure darkness your relevance will vanish are we there? yes do you know what it means to walk with elijah go and read the bible and find out the kind of person elijah was don't you think elijah was just a calm loving person elijah historically speaking was a temperous person only god knows how many times he insulted elijah where is this stupid person do don't play with me before i call down fire and he says sorry sir he would have said see let me tell you by age you're only two years older than me you better stop all this shout and humble yourself now if you have a character problem go to god fathers do not need to be perfect to command your honor that position has put them in a position where they are deserving of your honor forever please learn this because we have a lot of um i don't know what to call it i've been praying for the body of christ especially our generation of preachers may god grant us grace to not allow enlightenment and spiritual illumination make us bring a curse upon ourselves by our sheer dishonor for the fathers simply because of what we call enlightenment mm -mm. noah took wine and slept naked one of the sons came and saw the father's nakedness and was laughing he even went to go and call the other sons and say you can't believe it our father is naked come to him and the other one rebuked him and came behind and covered him now the strange thing is that when he got up nobody had to tell him what happened he got up and said all of you let me allocate blessings based on your honor and dishonor just because you saw my nakedness does not mean the man to left me nobody had to tell noah the story that happened even if elisha dies of sickness beware the bones still carry power this is a very serious parable that the body of christ must learn are we together yes sir he got up and cursed the one who laughed at his nakedness and said a servant of servants you shall be and you think god will not honor it we have to be very careful anything that makes you get to a position 
where you believe the person who has made immense spiritual contribution to your life whether directly as a father or any kind of supporting person let me tell you the truth if you see anything in the life of any father or anybody that you feel has a problem go and pray go and pray your first part of call is to pray and say lord you have shown them mercy you don't know what it takes to carry certain mantles if you are elijah jezebel is coming for you are we together there are many people who are not being attacked by satan because they are not doing anything even if you call him he will not come because your life is making such zero kingdom impact that he will not waste his time on that Is that a lesson for us to learn? Oh no. From the depth of your heart. Pastor, I have been watching you and I have seen that God always shows up in your life. I've seen that grace, but it looks like my, I don't know why finances come, helps come for me, but help will only come when the problem has escalated and I hope you know there is timing to help. If it does not come on time, it will not serve the purpose. If a plant is dying and water does not come and when the plant is dead, rain falls, will it bring the plant back to life? Rain does not bring a dead plant back to life. So you need help on time. There are people who don't have that grace of on time. <clears throat> help will come always when they do not need it. You can come with honor and say, sir, I know that I am a member in this church. I'm the head of the choir or head of whatever. But today, I am not just coming to the one who is preaching. I acknowledge you as touching the investment of God's grace. Let me tell you, even if he says, God bless you, I'm in a hurry. Just drop it in the offering basket. As for you, did the woman who drew virtue from Jesus, did she talk to him? She was making that discussion and Jesus was passing. There were all kinds of touch, but there was one that was a touch of honor and a touch of faith. Hallelujah. I have mastered the art of receiving the anointing from people because perpetually I have programmed myself to be in a position of honor and a position of love. I never ever will go and stand to see any father of faith even if I bump to, on them by mistake I must use even if it is that one minute as an opportunity for honor it is that foolishness that has brought us this far are we together I was humbled by the calls and the prayers I received during my birthday just last week, some of our fathers of faith in this nation, very early in the morning, here was their call. I was even surprised myself. Ah, daddy, God bless you. My son, I want to bless you. Right there, I got down my knees with my hands lifted and put the phone on loudspeaker. And as they prayed, you, you know when somebody prays. Look, there is a way you can pray, give me a chance, let me hurry up and go. But there is a way you can pray from the depth of your heart. Ah, no. There, there are prayers you know that they came from the bowels of the spirit. Before we are done with this program, after I speak over you, I hope you don't mind if I plead with pastor to come and stand here. And I, I, I plead, I can, I can stand, Pastor, and plead with you that he would stand here. I know he has been prophesying and speaking over your life, but that he would declare a blessing from his spirit. Let me tell you the truth. There are different levels of prayers and blessing. There are people you can even lay hands on and they fall down. And you too, you know that nothing came on them. Just a general grace to help them so that you can pass. But there are people who you know this is from the bowels of the spirit. I repeat, the key is honor and the key is service. Why will Jacob, Isaac, Rebecca was there to cook for him? But he said, no. Where is Esau? 
go he had cattle i hope you know he was not poor where did jacob get the one that he cooked was he not at the back of the house so there was already supply he said mm -mm, i wanted to cost you something it is a law go carry your instruments of war go and capture that animal make me venison make sure it is the one that my soul delights in there is no father that blesses in anger there is no father that blesses in sadness your assignment is to provoke that joy through honor and step back and watch the blessing flow are we learning there was someone who continued to annoy his mother pastor this man annoyed the mother one day she cursed him he would steal and do a lot of things and she said no i can't give birth to you and cause pain like this you know what she told him it was a curse she looked at him and said you will only stop stealing the day a rat stops stealing this is a true story if i'm joking i will tell you i'm joking this guy will come out of prison like this and within a few weeks he's back again because in her anger and her pain there might be many people let me tell you the, the anointing was only designed to fight what was caused by satan not by god the anointing only corrects what is antichrist did you get what i said now the anointing only corrects what it is and once you are standing in the will of god and the devil now comes the anointing can work but if it is god fighting you is it the anointing that will rescue you the anointing only corrects what is antichrist it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of god but we are going to be speaking god forbid but who knows the kinds of atmospheres that people are carrying on their heads every good thing around them and yet nothing speaks because you are carrying the ill speakings of people job said in six things god will deliver you yes seven one of it is the scourging tongues of men that the tongue of men can be like a whip to your destiny let me wrap up the last scripture what happens when you really encounter a vessel that is anointed first samuel chapter 10 hallelujah hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne first samuel 10 from verse 1 glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne then samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said is it not because the lord hath anointed you to be captain over his inheritance verse 2 we're reading to seven thereabout when thou art depart from me that means now that you have encountered the anointing among the many things it can do are the following number one then thou shalt find two men by rachel's sepulcher in the border of benjamin of zelzel and they will say unto you the asses the donkeys which thou wentest to seek are found and lo thy father had left the care of these asses and sorrowed for you saying what shall i do for my son in other words because that grace has come upon you now what you are looking for now begins to return back you see what you call loss is a relative statement is dependent on the grace that is upon you there was no mention of a prayer by samuel to saul father 
restore the donkey. Once the anointing came, that mantle drew that donkey from wherever it was and took it back home. Could it be that by reason of what will come upon you, there are things that have left you. Just because they left you, they did not leave the earth. And under a certain condition, there is a force that will gravitate them from wherever they are to come and wait for you at the assigned place. Next verse. Verse 3. It says, then thou shalt go on forward. Oh, when the anointing comes, you don't go backward. It says, thou shalt go on Somebody say forward. Prophesy, say forward. In the name of Jesus, say forward. Thou shalt go on forward. You don't get anointed and go backward. Thou shalt go on forward from thence. And thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet there three men going up to God in Bethel. One carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread. And another carrying a bottle of wine. Verse 4. Watch what happens. And they shall salute you. Say honor. And they shall give you two loaves of bread. Say favor. And thou shalt receive it from their hands. These were men who carried their bread peacefully from home. Going to go and do. That means there are many people holding things now that is not their own. They are caretakers. As at the time they got it, they did not know it's not their own. Very soon, God is going to be speaking to them. It's time to release what you have been holding. I hope you believe what you are hearing. Please give us that scripture. So you will meet three people. One holding wine, one holding three loaves of bread, and one holding three kids. And they will salute you and give you two loaves of bread. And then verse 4, it says, verse 5 now, it says, And then after that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where there is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come hither to the city, thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them, and they shall prophesy, verse 6, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Verse 7. And let it be when these signs are come. There are signs that validate that you are anointed. The anointing is not empty. It speaks. There are signs. Thou shalt do as occasion serve thee for God is with you. We've gotten there. Let's finish to 9. Verse 8 now. It says and it and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee and offer burnt offerings and, and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Pay attention to verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass. When? When? That means there are signs that will come to pass today in the name of Jesus. All those signs came to pass that day. I have tested and seen what the anointing of the spirit can do. What genuine spiritual empowerment can do. How does a man come into Abuja with 20 naira like pastor said? And today he's standing. Look at the wonder working power of Jesus. And when pastor was showing me one other time the land outside and all of these things. I said my God. Look how humble this man is. There are people who have been. There are people who were born in this city. Born in this city. And not to be sarcastic. They have tried and done everything. See if God doesn't help you. Bah. You can, you can weary yourself. There are people who, there are people whose relatives work in FCDA. Till today they don't have a plot of land. And it's not like the relatives are wicked. What is on you is what controls what is around you. 
Don't forget this. What is on your head, oh, my people, is what controls what is around you. If your head is empty, your life will reflect it. Thou anointest my head with oil, but my cup runneth over. He does not anoint the cup. I can see what is on your head by looking at what is on your cup. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is the head. Don't blame the business. It is the head. God does not anoint cups. He anoints the head and then the cup runs over. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, every dimension of spiritual possibility has a grace connected to it, not just an instruction connected to it. There is the grace that brings favor. There is the grace that brings speed. There is the grace for visibility and influence. The question is, which one have you not obtained? This conference is another opportunity for you. In the next five minutes, I'm going to leave you with Jesus. We are going to pray and cry. Remember, you don't receive the anointing at your terms. You must subscribe with humility and say, Jesus, I am here. Some of you are receiving this for the sake of your family. Some of you are receiving this for the sake of the many destinies connected to you. Let me tell you this. I have seen very gifted people in this city and across the nations. And yet, because of certain anointings that are deficient in their lives. When you bring a chef to the kitchen and the chef sees you cooking, do you know sometimes, even without tasting, he can know you did not add this. Say, ah, no, 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 this will not come out well. Add this quickly. Add this. You have done well. Your pot is clean. You are doing well, but the ingredients you have are limited with respect to what you want to produce. And he can tell you, add this. There are others you don't even know. Hallelujah. I didn't know that this can be added to make this. And he adds it and will spice up that meal. And by the time you serve the guests, you serve them with honor. There are many of us, the only thing in your destiny with respect to cooking like this is maybe rice, salt, and the pot. Ah, that's too ordinary for an extraordinary meal. There are ingredients that you need to carry. By the privilege of God's grace, among the many who have been gifted in the body of Christ, we have come as privileged stewards, them that sell. That if your heart is open to receive, God can add glory and honor to that meal. Remember what I'm telling you now. Imagine someone serving you a meal and he says it is jollof rice or fried rice. And all you see is rice, salt, and maybe oil. Appa, is that a good meal? Even if the person kneels down to serve you. For many of you, that's what you have been serving the world. That's why they've been ignoring you. This is too common. We have alternatives. But in this conference, that master chef is adding some apparatuskiata. Adding something. He said, add to this. Add to this, this one. Add to this, this one. He's adding to your sincerity wisdom. To your wisdom character. To your character fire. Now you carry these ingredients and anywhere and everywhere you go, the fragrance. Listen, there are people who do not need to come to the kitchen to know what is happening there. There is a fragrance that comes from the kitchen. Is that true? That you can be in the living room and literally you can be distracted. Not intentionally, but by reason of the wonder happening in the kitchen. And you get up and you will want to go to the kitchen. Gentiles shall come to your light. There has to be something that attracts them. Micah chapter 4 talks about this end time church. It says that men will call upon themselves and say, Come, let us go to the house of the Lord. For there he will teach us his ways. Someone is ready to pray. Father, my life is too ordinary. Let the grace that produces an extraordinary life fall upon me. Please cry to the Lord from the depth of your heart. No distraction, no looking around. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Shanika. Makes kote makata embreke te katosh lekreke te parakato sheketa. Please pray. Embra te kete kete bakatosh koto pata. Shadike te beleketa. Someone pray, someone pray, someone pray. 
My head has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I'm anointed with fresh oil. Someone is praying. Pray, pray, pray. Father, turn my life around. Change my story by your anointing. 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 Turn my ministry around. By your anointing. Turn my business around. By your anointing. Turn my career around. Turn my family around. Let's go, 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 go